The Bernstein Bears Valentine Love Bug by Mike Bernstein. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more read aloud books for kids. There's a wedding in the family on this Valentine's Day. Every mom and pop and youngin will have a role to play. It was the middle of winter, and all of Bear Country lay snoozing under a deep, snowy blanket. Brrrr, shivered Papa Bear, coming in from shoveling snow. It's colder than a penguin's icebox out there. Come and warm up by the fire, dear, said Mama Bear, pouring him a cup of cocoa. Then she settled down to read her mail. The cubs were warm and cozy by the fire, too. Brother was sorting his baseball cards and dreaming of spring. Honey was seeing how high she could stack her blocks. Sister was making valentines for the upcoming school Valentine's Day party. It was still two weeks away, but it couldn't come soon enough for Sister. It may be cold outside, she sighed. But Valentine's Day makes me feel all warm and cozy inside. Yuck, said brother. What a little love bug. A love bug, said sister. That's a great idea. I'm going to sign all my valentines from the love bug. She began to sign her valentines that way and added a cute little picture of a heart-shaped ladybug to each one. Mush muttered brother. Actually, he rather enjoyed getting valentines from some of the girl cubs in his class, but he wasn't going to admit it, especially to sister. And speaking of love, said Mama, here's a letter from cousin Cora. It says she's getting married on Valentine's Day. Married, said sister. On Valentine's Day? Are we going to the wedding? We certainly are, said Mama. We're all invited. In fact, she's asked you to be her flower girl. Me? A flower girl, said Sister. I've always wanted to be a flower girl. She felt she had hit the love bug jackpot. Things began to happen in the Bear family's treehouse over the next two weeks. Wedding things. Packages began to arrive. Are we expecting anything from the bridal shop? Asked Papa, answering the door. Sister and Mama both came running. Yes, we are, they called. It was Sister's dress for the wedding. Oh, isn't it beautiful, she said. You're going to be the loveliest flower girl ever said Papa. For a little love bug, a Valentine's Day wedding was even better than a school Valentine's Day party. For days, Sister studied wedding books and magazines. She brought one to the dinner table one evening. The flower girl is one of the most charming traditions of the formal wedding, she read, taking her place in the procession. How cute, said Papa. You're even studying how to be a flower girl. But Mama was thoughtful. It was fine for Sister to take an interest in being a flower girl, but weddings are a pretty grown-up thing. Maybe Sister should be paying more attention to cub things, like the school Valentine's Day party. Besides reading about weddings, Sister talked about them. In fact, she didn't talk about much else. She talked about flowers and invitations, cakes and table settings, makeup and wedding gifts, and more. One night, Mama overheard Sister talking on the phone with her friend Lizzie Bruin. Of course, said Sister, Cousin Cora was going to marry that insurance salesman from Grizzlyville, but they had a big fight, and now she's going to marry this fellow from Big Bear City. Hmm, said Mama to herself. Gossiping about Cousin Cora breaking up with the insurance salesman from Grizzlyville was definitely not a cub thing. Mama decided it was time to have a little talk with Sister. My dear, said Mama when Sister was off the phone, 
I know that being part of a wedding is a very grown-up and exciting thing, but I also know that Cousin Cora would be disappointed to learn you were gossiping about her after asking you to be her flower girl. Sister's eyes widened. I never thought of that, she said. I won't do that anymore, Mama. I don't want to hurt Cousin Cora's feelings. Mama smiled and gave her a hug. That's my little love bug, she said. In fact, Sister added, this wedding thing has been taking up an awful lot of time. I haven't even finished my valentines for the school party. That's really important. I think I'll go work on them right now. After all, Valentine's Day is just a few days away. Sister's valentines were soon ready, but there was one more thing to do before the wedding, a rehearsal to make sure things went smoothly. Cousin Cora, her fiancé, family, and friends gathered at the chapel in the woods. Ms. McGriz was in charge. At first, things didn't go too well. Some folks didn't know what to do, but Sister knew her role perfectly. It seems that if a little flower girl can do the march properly, said Ms. McGriz, then you ushers and bridesmaids ought to be able to do the same. Mama and Papa were very proud of their little flower girl. Valentine's Day came at last, and the school party was a great success. Sister's love bug signature was a big hit. Billy Griswold gave her a nice card with lots of hearts and flowers. Sister had a little crush on him, but she wasn't going to admit it, especially to him. Sister had such a wonderful time at the party, she lost track of time. Hey, love bug, said brother, packing up his school things. It's time to get going. Huh? said sister. Why? She was busy talking to Billy Griswold. There's this thing called a wedding, said brother. The wedding, said sister. I almost forgot. Come on, we've got to get ready. A little later, the bear family arrived at the chapel in the woods. They joined the other wedding guests going inside. Sister and the bridesmaids gathered at the door with Ms. McGriz guiding them to their places. Sister looked down at her new dress. It looked a little wrinkly. But before she had time to worry, the wedding march started playing, and she found herself walking down the aisle. She tossed flowers from her basket as she marched. One, two, three, toss! One, two, three, toss! She whispered to herself. The bride followed and joined the groom. Preacher Brown began the service. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and health. Sister felt a lump in her throat. Talk about feeling all warm and cozy inside. At last, the preacher said, I now pronounce you bear and wife. You may kiss the bride. A tear came to the eye of the little Valentine love bug. But Brother Bear just sighed. Mush, he muttered. Thanks so much for joining us today. Subscribe to our channel for more read aloud books for kids and help us reach our next goal of 2,000 subscribers. We post new read aloud books for kids every week, so we'll see you again soon.